Welcome to the 14th video on ancient Rome. In the previous three videos, we examined the Roman Kingdom. In this video, we are going to get started on the Roman Republic, and specifically the early Roman Republic. And so I do not know when we'll see this slide again because there's going to be a lot of videos on the Roman Republic timeline. Okay, so let's get going. Now, the early Roman Republic was a struggle for central Italy. At this time in Roman history, the Romans only controlled about 10 to 15 square miles, if you can imagine that. And so they hadn't really branched out to the rest of Italy yet because they had to deal with all the local tribes that surrounded them. Now, as we know, the Romans formed their republic in 509 BC. And what did that mean? Well, the Etruscans left the city, leaving Rome by itself. And they took with them a lot of money and military. And so Rome was essentially on its own. And it was a very dangerous world out there because the Romans were surrounded by a lot of hostile tribes. And most of them had Rome in their sights. And what did these tribes want? Well, there were three main things. First was Rome's location. It was an absolutely strategic location on the Tiber River because it controlled the vital Tiber River. And the other item of interest was those seven hills that we talked about a few videos ago. And they were ideal for defense. So that was another point of interest. Now, surrounding those hills were nice grazing lands. So if you were going to raise some animals and do some herding, those grazing lands that surrounded Rome were also ideal. And the final thing was that saltwater port we talked about at Ostia, which was at the mouth of the Tiber River. That was a key port that also controlled some saltwater flats. And so that was another thing that Rome's enemies were interested in. Now, who was the threat? Well, you can take a look at that map there on the right, and you can see all of these tribes that surround the Romans. And as I said, many of them were hostile. First, there were the Latin tribes to the south, and then there were the Volsci, which you can see right here on the map, and then there were the Sabines, and you will remember them during the time of the kings. There was also the Aquians, which were located in the Apennine Mountains, as you can see right here on the map, and then, of course, the Etruscans to the north, and then there was the city of Veii, which was an Etruscan city, and they were a long-term enemy of Rome. So over the next couple of videos, we will be talking about each one of these tribes and how Rome had to deal with each one of them before moving out to the rest of Italy. Now, I should point out that one of the difficulties Rome faced early on was that they had to fight a lot of these enemies at the same time. So they were forced to kind of divide their forces. But it was the Roman legion's ability to stand up to a charge which really gave it an early advantage over its enemies. And that was because of that Roman discipline we talked about several videos ago. Now, the first region the Romans had to straighten out were the Latins. Now, there were eight towns that formed the Latin League, and they went to war against Rome. Now, that's not really fair, right? Eight against one. But the Romans prevailed in the Battle of Lake Regulus. And as a result, most of the Latin cities formed an alliance with Rome in the lead. Now, this was relatively easy because the Latins shared a common language and a common culture with the Romans. They also shared the same gods. Now, if you're going to ally with somebody, it's always easier to do that if you share the same gods and culture. So even though this alliance was now formed, they still faced extreme threats from all the non-Latin tribes, specifically the Volscians and and the Aquians, and we will get to them in the next few slides. Now, the first extreme threat to the Romans in the Latin League were the Volsci. And as you can see on that map, they were very close to Latin territory. They were just southeast of Rome and Latium. And so the Volsci were starting to move into Latin territory and began to threaten Rome itself. Now, one of the cities they seized was Antium, which was a coastal port city that you can see right here on the map. Now, from that city, they had a base of operations from which they could launch attacks into Latium itself. And they did that seizing several cities, including Velitri, as you can see right here on the map. And so the Romans had to deal with this threat or they might get overrun by the Volscians. And so in 494 BC, the Romans decided to provoke the Volscians. And how do you start a war? Well, you go into enemy territory and you start ravaging the lands. Kind of similar to what the Spartans did to the Athenians. And so the Romans do just that. They go into Volscian territory and they start cutting down some trees, wiping out some crops, destroying some towns, and eventually the two armies will make camp very close to each other. Now the 
Volscians had superior numbers, and they were able to charge the Roman lines first. Now, the Roman consul in charge, now remember, Roman consuls now are leading the army, not Roman kings, ordered his troops to stand firm. And when the Volscians attacked the Romans, the Romans more than held their own, and they were able to eventually drive the Volscians back in disarray. The Roman army would pursue them and slaughtered quite a few Volscians. And the Romans were able to take back Velitre, and as we will see going forward, the Romans placed a colony in that town. And that's kind of what the Romans will do. When they take a town, they will usually install a Roman garrison in the conquered town because the Romans didn't like to give up any towns they conquered. And so that was a key initial victory for the Romans. Now in 493 BC, the Romans were led by the consul Posthumus, and he was able to defeat a force of the Volsci from the coastal town of Antium. Now, the Romans took several towns around Antium and then eventually reconquered Antium itself. So that was another key victory early on for the Romans. Now, things sort of took a turn for the worse in 491 BC when the Volscians launched a counterattack and were able to actually march on Rome itself. But the leader of the Volscians at this time was actually a former Roman, and his mother and wife were actually able to convince him to cease his attack on Rome, which he eventually did. And so the Volscian invasion ended, and Rome survived to fight another day. Now from this point on, the Volsci were pretty much contained by the Romans. They were not eliminated, though, and that's a key point to make here, until about two centuries later in 304 BC. And that occurred during the Third Samnite War, which will be the topic of discussion in a few videos from now. Now, the other tribe that gave the Romans a lot of grief were the Aquians, and that was an Italian tribe that was located northeast of Rome and was right in the middle of the Apennine Mountains. Now, the Aquians fought several wars against the Romans and were a constant threat. Now, one of the more notable incidents occurred in 459 BC when the Aquians attacked one of Rome's allies at Tusculum. While the Romans rushed an army up there and they were able to drive the Aquians out of Tusculum and a peace treaty was signed. Well, one year later, the Aquians violated that treaty and attacked Tusculum again in 458 BC. This time, the Romans raised two consular armies. Remember, there were always two Roman consuls. So the Romans sent two consular armies to relieve the siege at Tusculum. And so they camped outside the city. Well, the Aquians built a wall around one of the consular armies, and so one consular army was threatened with annihilation. Now, the other Roman consul was not sure how to handle this situation. Now, when anything was going poorly for the Romans, they usually appointed a dictator, and the man they turned to was Cincinnatus. Now, he had been the consul in the previous year, but his term had expired. Remember, it is only a one-year term. So he was appointed dictator. And he arrived on the scene and quickly turned the situation around. He sent every available Roman to the area to secure the defenses of the Roman armies. And then he basically did what the Aquians had done. He started to build a wall around the Aquian army, and he succeeded. Now, the Aquians tried to break out in several attempts, but they ultimately failed, and they were forced to surrender to Cincinnatus. So Cincinnatus has basically turned a Roman defeat into a major victory. So you can see how the office of the Roman dictator could be very useful to the Romans in turning disastrous situations around. Now, Cincinnatus dealt quite gently with the Aquians. He let most of the army go except for the leaders. They were kept prisoners in Rome. And for his efforts, Cincinnatus received a Roman triumph. Now, usually a dictator was elected for six months, but Cincinnatus resigned only after 16 days. Now, similar to the Volscians, the Romans did not defeat the Aquians in a decisive defeat. And like the Volscians, they were not eliminated until the Third Samnite War in 304 BC. Okay, that is going to do it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video where we will continue on with the Roman struggles in Central Italy.